This is the fight of our lives. And we're gonna win. Whatever it takes. He's pretty good, that. Right? I couldn't stop him. Neither could I. We all made a bond that I think is really exceptional and rare. And uh, we got to do really great stuff that the fans really loved. You know, you, you know that's kind of coming to an end. So it was always a little bittersweet and it was always on everybody's mind. Like, you know, I'd be in a scene with Robert and I'd look over at him and we'd just be like, we did this, you know? And that was really moving at times. certainly was you know a lot of nostalgia a slight sort of melancholy these people have become family and we've shared some years of our life together now you anticipate it being an emotional experience but then when they actually say you know chris you're wrapped and, and it's and it's done it's like that graduation day you know it's coming but then when it hits you can't prepare for it it, it was it was more emotional than i expected some people move on but not us not us. That's incredibly emotional. And we're bringing to close a six and a half year journey for us and a 10 to 11 year journey for some of the actors. These characters have come to define major parts of their careers and they're ubiquitous with these characters on a global level. This has been in my mind, I think more than anything, it's just that journey from uh, self-centeredness to making space for others, to making space for a relationship with Pepper, to having comma tragic things happen, like with he and Cap. Thank you, Tony. Will you keep that a little quiet? Didn't bring one for the whole team. And then healing because we had to come together to fight for the greater good. There's something really profound about it. You trust me? I do. What I put upon my character, those very principles of family and value. We're talking about a superhero with zero superpowers. But it's a guy you don't want to mess with because the values of, of him are, are unflappable. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. He's just an everyman. He has a high skill set. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Charlie. They're getting ready to release Avengers Endgame on Blu-ray and digital, so they're dropping a whole bunch of new deleted scenes and promos. We have Comic-Con next week where they announce their big Marvel Phase 4 plans and release some of the teasers for the next couple of movies. So we'll break it all down. We're doing an IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Avengers or Spider-Man moment on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. The Russos separately also dropped a special weird mystery Comic-Con teaser for a separate panel that they're doing. This is the video that they posted. It's very cryptic. Their panel is going to be happening Friday, but they incorporated a lot of footage from their previous Marvel Comic-Con panels in the teaser. Paul H, there, there is no way in hell that we are not going to show you some footage. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think they're going to reveal based on that teaser because it's really hard to guess what they're going for for their panel reveal using all that previous Marvel Hall H Comic Con panel stuff from previous years. We just learned about another big deleted scene Tom Holland when he was doing press for Spider-Man Far From Home talked about another scene where Spider-Man is fighting Thanos and he snaps his fingers and pulls everyone out of their body astral style like the Ancient One does with Doctor Strange during the Doctor Strange movie. He said that Spider-Man had to save everyone by wrangling all their bodies using his webs to grab them all so that their physical forms wouldn't be destroyed before their astral forms re-merged with their bodies. It was a really cool idea, but I can see why they probably deleted it because there was so much stuff already going on with the Spider-Man character in all these other battles between Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame that at a certain point they just had to say, okay, we've already spent a half a billion dollars making these movies. We're just going to cut it for time. They have a couple alternate versions of Iron Man's last scene with Thanos. There's a couple different versions of the scene they filmed at the Avengers Tower in 2012 when they're in the lobby with Loki before Loki gets away with the Tesseract. 
It looks like there was even more moments referencing Vision post Avengers Infinity War and Wakanda. There's still a lot of other deleted scenes from Avengers Infinity War that might never see the light of day. They're very sparse with the amount of deleted scenes they put on these Blu-ray releases. I know there's a lot of questions about what's going to happen with Vision during Marvel Phase 4 because he's an android, androids can be repaired just like robots, so that was the whole point of Shuri trying to separate him from the Mind Stone. She would have the technology to recreate him if Banner doesn't want to do it himself. You see more scenes of Hawkeye in Japan when he's going full Ronin. There's enough material there that they left on the cutting room floor that they could have turned it into its own little Hawkeye movie. Usually they expand those parts of the film with famous Asian actors for their foreign releases in places like China. Like they'll full on no joke release an alternate cut of their Marvel movies, pretty much all their Marvel movies, with slightly different scenes tuned for international audiences and if there are censorship considerations in foreign countries. Like China is hardcore about the way they censor their films. Usually that just winds up being a longer version of a scene with an Asian star that's super popular in China. A really good example is Iron Man 3 with the scientists and the party at the very beginning. When they released the film in China, they just included a much longer version of this scene with this Asian actor. But that was it. It didn't really affect the plot of the movie that much. As promised, I got pepper sorted out, took some tinkering. But then I thought to myself, why stop there? Of course, there are people who say progress is dangerous, but I'll bet none of those idiots ever had to live with a chest full of shrapnel. And now, neither will I. Let me tell you, that was the best sleep I'd had in years. The Yakuza person Hawkeye was fighting during Avengers Endgame was Hiroki Sonata. He was from Westworld Season 2, you may remember him. He's playing a character called Akiko, who actually was a comic book character, even though he's just a Yakuza in this context. But if there were any questions about who he was playing, he really is playing a comic book character. There's a little bit more of the Hawkeye Black Widow scenes from Vormir. I've already done a couple separate videos about that. And even more recently, I posted a video where Jeremy Renner is talking about a completely different version of this where Thanos attacks them on Vormir. So it gives you an idea for just how many different ways they tried to make this movie before we saw the final cut. And it's very different that's in the movie now. It's a scene we reshot because it's it much more complicated scene that's that's in, in endgame now there is an attack with thanos had some ship or something and a bunch of weird aliens were running around and made it too complicated these are the official deleted scenes that they've listed for their blu-ray release there's one called goji berries one called bombs on board the suckiest army in the galaxy you used to freaking live here tony and howard in avengers take a knee usually deleted scenes are listed in chronological order where they would have originally appeared in the film so Goji Berry sounds like it's something from the beginning of the movie, maybe with Iron Man and Nebula scenes on the Benatar when they're still stuck in space by themselves. Bombs on board sounds like it's more footage from their first attempt to go kill the older version of Thanos when Thor finally goes for the head. Suckiest Army in the Galaxy sounds exactly like something that Rocket would say, so it's also probably from that original scene where they go to kill Thanos. Even more rocket sass, you can just feel it reading the titles of these deleted scenes. You used to freaking live here sounds like it's Rocket talking to Fat Thor when they go to Asgard during Thor the Dark World to get the Aether. Tony and Howard is obviously a different scene in the 1970s with Iron Man talking to his father. And Avengers Take a Knee sounds like it's the scene of everyone meeting up during the middle of the final boss fight with younger Thanos at the end of the movie. There's a little bit of footage they've released from that. There's a scene that they filmed where everybody who came back from the dust met up with the other Avengers in the trenches mid-fight to plan their next attack. And they said it just really slowed that final battle down. And it was already like a half an hour of the movie. So that's why they wound up cutting the film. But a lot of this stuff will end up dropping the week after Comic-Con. Of course, I'll do videos for whatever bonus features they release on the Blu-ray. Leave all your requests in the comments below. There's still so much stuff going on that we're learning about from Avengers Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home. There's a new Fantastic Four Spider-Man Far From Home Easter egg video, Green Goblin, and a Venom Easter egg video that I'm working on. That stuff will post in the next couple of days. I'm trying to give everyone a couple more days to see the movie if they haven't seen it yet. But there are so many big Easter eggs, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled when you go to see it. Next week at Comic-Con is going to be crazy, so as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you'll see all my videos when I post them. No worries. But congratulations to the giveaway winner for my last big Marvel video, Xavier Ramirez. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. 
Click here for my breakdown of that Spider-Man 3 teaser from the end of Spider-Man Far From Home, and click here for that brand new Star Wars The Mandalorian trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.